Welcome everybody. Today's video is titled, Don't Miss God's Great Revelations for You in 2018. Why do I say that? Because it is so easy to miss. Even when Jesus was there with the apostles for these three and a half years, and in Matthew 16, he says to the apostles, who do you say that I am? And none of them get it except Peter. And even then Jesus says, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. So we desperately need our Heavenly Father to not miss out what God has got in store for us in 2018. And it could be anything. It could be even for us to truly value and to love the people in our lives more. That can be the revelation. It can be the revelation that, that the purpose that God wants to do more in your life, in your ministry. There's many things that God could want to reveal to you, but it could be so easy to miss. So let's look at Exodus chapter 6 to 9. And these are the, the readings that the Jews read um, this week. It's called um, Parsha's Vera from the book of Exodus 6, 7, 8, and 9. And let us see three major revelations that God reveals to the Jews. Let's see whether they get it or not. The first one is God promises in chapter 6 that he was not known to the patriarchs by his name, but he's now going to reveal his name to Israel. And of course, in chapter 3, God, when Moses asks God, what is your name? God says, tell them that he that was, is, and is to come, okay, has sent you. This is my name. I shall be what I shall be. I am that I am. So we see God is revealing his nature, that which was Father, that which is Son, and that which is to come, the Holy Spirit, the three um, parts of his divine nature. Even in the Jewish Zohar, the, the books that Elijah came and gave Rabbi Shimon and Ben Yoki said the nature of God split up in three columns. The Father, uh, the Kita, which is the Mashiach, which we call the Son, and um, the Mother, which actually is the, the Holy Spirit. Though he's a he, meaning he's the most gentle like a mother. And this is the name that God wants to reveal. God is going to reveal the Father and Son together to Israel, which had never been done before. Jesus revealed himself to Abraham, and Jesus revealed himself to Hagar in Genesis 16, verse 13, where Hagar says, I have seen him, the living one, the God of vision, uh, and, and that was Jesus, for Jesus could be seen in bodily form, but the Father could not. But they were never seen together. But here, God says uh, um, to Moses, I am now going to reveal something of myself that was never been revealed before. And that's what God wants for you in 2018. He wants to reveal something to you that you've never seen before, believe me but we cannot afford to miss it. So how does God do that? If you go through all the book of Exodus, you see in Exodus chapter 20, from 15 to the end, God is talking to Moses and God says, uh, uh, go down and make sure they don't come near the mountain, lest God come and smite them. So we see God speaking in the third person. He's talking about another God as well as talking himself to Moses and then you also find Exodus uh, chapter 24 verse 1 God is speaking to Moses God said to Moses go up and see God so God is beginning to reveal to Israel the father and son relationship that would have been revealed in the garden of Eden but because of sin it was cast out so God is coming to reveal something magnificent and then you see in Exodus 24 and verse 7, that the Israel, the 74 elders, see the God of Israel standing there 
fully bodily form and they're so surprised that they, they, that they weren't struck down dead um, because you're not supposed to see God and live. So the, there we see that there's the part of God that you can see and the part of God you cannot see. And that's what God is revealing um, to Israel, which of course it climaxes in um, Exodus uh, chapter 34 and in chapter 33, where Moses asked to see God. Now remember, they've already seen God in 24. So why would Moses be asking that? Well, what he's asking to see is the Father. He's seen the Son in Exodus chapter 24, verse 7, fully. So now he's asking in Exodus 33 to see the Father, uh, the part of God he's not seen. And God said to him, you cannot see me, my face, and live. Okay, that's the Father side. So in chapter 34, God takes him, and God stands beside him, that's the Son, and then God passes by him, that's the Father, and then he sees the back part of the Father, not the front part, but the Son part, which is Jesus, was standing beside him. So there you see something magnificent, the Father and Son are seen together for the first time, wow! What a glorious revelation in the book of Exodus. But do they get it? No, they don't get it. Israel failed to see it. And they struggle with it. And all the way through um, the Tevin in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 26 and 28, they see the God of Israel. All of them, that's the sun part, sitting on the throne as a man. And that confuses them so much that they ref it is not allowed to be taught in synagogues for nearly thousands of years, except you're a very, very learned rabbi. They missed, if they only understood, the revelation that was revealed to them in Exodus when God, for the first time, revealed the Father and Son together in Exodus uh, chapter 34. But they missed it. Even in the commentary in Exodus 34, you see God starts to pray to God. God calls Hashem, Hashem, which means God, God. And it so surprised the rabbis that the rabbi said, if it wasn't written there, they couldn't speak such things out of their mouth. But they still missed the revelation of the Father and Son together. And if they had got it, Israel would not have ended up in the mess that they are in today. So what revelations is God bringing to us so blatantly like he did there, but we miss it. An example of that is Solomon. Solomon struggled with women. It became his downfall as he had a thousand wives. And even in Ecclesiastes 7, he says, I've searched among all of Israel and I have not found one righteous one good woman is that the case or was he blind to the revelation of the one that God brought him and I believe in 1 Kings 10 Solomon was doing all good until 1 Kings 11 for 1 Kings 11 he fell and God had said he tore the kingdom from him sadly why in 1 Kings 10 the queen of Sheba came and the queen of Sheba brought all gold, so many 666 talents of gold and spices such had never been seen before and was amazed at Solomon. But Solomon let her go. And there was the woman that would have been the one that would have satisfied him. But he missed the revelations. Look at all the good she bought him and he could not see it. So I pray in 2018, we don't become like Israel and we miss the amazing revelation right in front of their eyes of the father and son together and not be like Solomon, that the woman of his dreams that came to give so much to him, so much honor and respect and wealth that he did not see it. So there, there's a prayer 
in your prayer life to us to beg God to please that we do not miss the great revelation that God wants to bring us this 2018. There's the first section. The second section coming from Genesis, sorry, Exodus chapter 8, we see that there was 10 plagues um, in Israel, okay? But the first three plagues, sorry, in Egypt, the first, sorry, the first three plagues was the blood and the river Nile, was the frogs, and then was the lice. And then the seven plagues after that was a swarm of flies and it was things much worse, things that you couldn't control. The first three are ones that you could overcome, but the, the last seven were ones that you were beyond your control. And the first three plagues that God made both Israel and Egypt suffer. Israel had to suffer the blood um, in the River Nile, and as the Egyptians had to dig for water, so too did Israel. And when the frogs came and went into the beds and went into the ovens, so the frogs also went into Gershom as well, into Israel. So Israel had to suffer that also. And also the lice. When the lice affected um, the Egyptians, so too it affected the Jews. Okay, but from the seventh plague, sorry, from the fourth plague onwards, the swarm of flies, God put a difference, you'll find in Exodus 8, 22, between the land of Goshen and Egypt, where no more did the plagues affect the land of Goshen, okay? Now, what's God's, what is the great revelation that God was showing there? God was showing us that if we must learn to suffer three plagues that God send us, the, the, the Nile being turned to blood, and having to dig for water means God wants us to dig for the water he wants in 2018. 2018, we must be prepared to dig for the revelations of God. The first section was don't miss the great revelations of God, that God bringing you, who your wife will be, all the great things that the Father and Son wants to bring you. The second section is to learn to dig for the revelations. Don't just sit back and think they'll come to you. I work tirelessly hard at studying, studying, studying. And no matter what problems come in my life, and I have problems, things that are really terrible sometimes, but I never, never stop digging. Uh, even when my whole Nile is turned to blood, I still refuse to stop digging. This year, if your Nile gets turned to blood, will you stop digging? If there's a death in your family, will you stop digging? If you're ill, will you stop digging? If you lose your money, will you stop digging? If you lose your wife, will you stop digging? So many problems that affect so many people. Um, but don't stop digging. First revelation God wants you to know. The second is the, um, there was the, the frogs. The frogs came into the house's ovens and in the bed. God wants us, remember Jesus says in the time of the end shall be like the times of Noah, where people were eating and drinking and giving in marriage, marrying and giving in marriage. So God wants, please let the most important things in your life not be your eating. That's the frogs in the oven. And you're resting, you're relaxing. That's the frogs in your bed. And also the marital life. Everybody's thinking, who's going to be my wife? Who's going to be my husband? Let the focus in your life be the Lord Jesus. Be the love for God. Okay? So that's the frogs that came up into your oven and into your beds. Uh, let God push away the, these things not being the most important. Remember Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and always righteousness. Then the oven, the food and the bed that your wife and your husbands shall be given to you. But in the times of Noah, what happens is that they pushed out the revelations of God and what was most important was their bed, their husbands and wives and their eating and 
drinking. And that will block the way from hearing the revelations of God that he wants to speak to you. And he wants to speak so much this year, but you must learn the Nile to blood. Dig even though your whole Nile gets turned to blood. And even though there's frogs in your oven and in your bed, you're prepared to put God first, uh, to seek him first uh, and, and put other things second. And you will see God will meet all your needs in this. And then there's the lice. What does that represent? God wants you to suffer lice. God wants lice to be in your hair, in your beard. You know, when you have lice, you scratch. The, that's the irritating things. God sends you small things that are irritating to test you. You will have people in your life that slightly irritate you. Your children can irritate you. Your workplace, your boss can irritate you. There can be something about your health they had to teach you. The Apostle Paul said to God, I had a thorn in my flesh and I begged God, please remove it. And Jesus said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. Je Jesus wanted Paul to suffer, learn to suffer. Paul said, I have learned to be content. Whatever condition I find myself in, pray, pray when things irritate you. Don't attack the person. Don't get rid of the person out of your life. Don't leave the church you're in just because people irritate you. Pray and ask God for strength to bear with the lice, the little things that irritate you. And you'll be surprised that the things that irritated you, they start, you start to ignore them. And if you learn to bear with these three plagues, your Nile being turned to blood, the frogs in your oven and in your bed, but you don't care because God is first, not wanting a wife or a husband and food and drink. Jesus is first. And when you learn to bear with those things, little things that irritate you, the bills that come through the post, your children spend too much money at the sweet shop, your wife spends too much money, all the things that irritate you, pray them through. Pray, Apostle Paul said, Jesus says, men always ought Pray. Apostle Paul prayed without ceasing, giving thanks in all things. And the lice that irritated you, they'll stop irritating you. And if you can learn to bear with these three plagues, then all the things that are terrible plagues that come to Israel, the cancers, the, 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 the plagues, the death of the firstborn, terrible things, these things happen to people's lives. You know why? Because they don't Learn the revelation of the three plagues that God wants us to learn. Enjoy it when your Nile gets turned to blood. Keep digging. If you stop digging when your Nile gets turned to blood, you'll open up the door for the, the, the seven worst plagues to come in your life. If you don't learn to put, let the frogs come into your bed and into your oven and to concentrate on Jesus first, rather than your wife, your husband, and your food and drink, then you'll open up the door to these seven worst plagues. If you don't learn to praise God for the small things that irritate you, then the door will be open for the four plagues. And these seven plagues were put outside of the children of Israel, but only on the condition that we learn to endure the three plagues in our life. Isn't that wonderful? Again, going on from the first revelation of God's name, that, are, <clears throat> that which was and is to come, the trinity of God. Now we have the trinity of plagues. God wants us to endure and to embrace and we will escape the cancers, the, the AIDS, the illnesses, the diseases that's inside of Egypt, the seven worst plagues. That is the secret revelation to healing is to accept the three plagues in your life. How many people truly see that? How many people run to the doctor at the slightest thing and don't learn to endure the irritating lice, the thorn in the flesh, lay on the grace of God and then find the wonderful power to escape the worst things that befall so many people. And the last revelation we had was... Uh, 
Exodus chapter 9, where Moses now, Aaron has been his spokesman. Aaron has been the one carrying the staff for Moses and speaking for Moses. But from, from the sixth plague, and God said to Moses, throw the dust in the air and it shall become a great plague. And Moses does himself. And then on the seventh plague, he then speaks to Pharaoh for the first time himself. Here's the revelation. Uh, that the things that other people have been doing for you in the past, now in 2018, you're going to have the strength to start doing things for yourself. Praise God. I waited till I was in my 40s till I had the strength to do things that other people were doing for me. But when the revelation came to me, God said, you can do it yourself now. You don't have to lean on these people that are doing these things for you. Now you can do it yourself. I had the faith and the courage, amen, to face Pharaoh myself. Praise be to God. And that is the revelation that Moses grabbed on the seven plague. And maybe this year you're going to start doing things. You're going to start being able to testify in church, which you couldn't do before. You're going to start being able to evangelize, which you couldn't be able to do before. You're going to start being able to read the Bible a lot more, which you couldn't do before. You're going to start being able to pray now, okay, more, which you couldn't, relying on other people's prayer, relying on other people teaching you the Bible. It's time now for you to step out yourself. So these are the three segments of revelations that God brought to Israel about the Father and Son, brought to Israel about the three plagues to endure, and brought to Moses as he began to learn to step out and to do things himself. Praise be to God. So now 2018 has come. What is it that God has come to reveal to you about your marriage, about your children, about your your um how you do things in the church, about stepping out in evangelism? Just pray, learn to pray, spend time with God in prayer. Just say, please, Lord, help me not to miss out the great revelations that God showed Israel, but they missed it. They missed the father and son. They missed the significance of the three plagues to endure. Amen. But Moses grabbed on to the revelation that he had faith now to face his fears. And God will, like he did to Israel, he already now is moving close to you and beginning to talk to you. I wish you all a very happy New Year.